the finance ministry estimates that Malaysia's shadow economy accounts for 21% of GDP or an estimated 300 billion ringgit. According to Bernama, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng wants illegal and undeclared economic activities to be tackled efficiently. Otherwise, it will result in a big loss of revenue to the country and threaten the stability of the nation's tax ecosystem, particularly in the aspects of fair taxation and voluntary tax compliance. He believes the Inland Revenue Board should constantly enhance its collaborative network and information sharing with other government agencies in the effort to curtail this leakage. Still on taxes, Lim says Putrajaya has set the direct tax collection target at 154.7 billion ringgit in 2020, up from 147 billion ringgit in 2019. Lim points out that although Malaysia's economy continues to grow each year, tax collection as a percentage of GDP has not been keeping pace. Based on World Bank figures for 2017, Malaysia's tax-to-GDP ratio was 13.1%, putting it below comparable countries such as Vietnam and South Korea. A former audit director says she was instructed not to print the final version of the 1MDB audit report until then-PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak gave his approval. Saadatul Nafisa Bashir Ahmad was with the special 1MDB audit team under the National Audit Department at the time. She testified today that she presented the final audit draft to the then Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Ali Hamsa, on February 29, 2016. It was then when Ali gave the directive not to print the report until Najib gave the go-ahead, saying it would have a political impact on the country. The final draft was the version that was amended to remove four items on the instructions of 1MDB CEO Arul Kandakandasamy and other high-ranking government officials. These omissions include several mentions of fugitive businessman Lo Tik Joe's involvement in 1MDB and a paragraph stating Cabinet was not informed that TIA's bond issuance was to be suspended as per the wishes of the then Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Police will be summoning MACC Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya over the release of tapped phone calls involving former PM Datuk Sri Najib Raza. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Bador confirmed today that she would be called in to answer a few questions and said all angles will be reviewed, given the anti-graft body's intention to protect the source of the tapes through the Whistleblowers Protection Act. He added it was important to establish the authenticity of the tapped calls. Meanwhile, Najib has reportedly decided to initiate contempt proceedings against the MACC and Latifa over the release of the recordings. Local reports quoted his lawyer, Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, as confirming the decision, although he did not reveal further details. Construction outfit Kerjaya Prospect Group has bagged a 617 million ringgit contract to build apartments for Aspen Vision City in Penang. This job win represents almost half of its 1.3 billion ringgit new job wins in 2019. The deal was inked between subsidiary Kerjaya Prospect Malaysia and Aspen, a joint venture company between Aspen Group Holdings and IKEA Southeast Asia. The contract involves two phases, namely Vivo and Vio, and is located in Aspen Vision City, which spans 245 acres of land. Construction works on Vivo will take 38 months from February 14, 2020, and are slated for completion by April 2023. Meanwhile, works on Vio are to be completed within 36 months from a commencement date to be determined later. Kerjaya Prospect Executive Chairman Datuk T. Eng Ho is happy that the group is off to a great start in 2020 and believes the job win demonstrates its growing reputation as a contractor of choice. To date, the builder has an outstanding order book of some 3.5 billion ringgit. Kenanga Investment Bank's asset management arm Kenanga Investors is cautiously optimistic on returns for stocks listed on Bursa Malaysia this year. This is based on the nation's economic outlook and expected recovery in corporate earnings. Kenanga Investors' Chief Investment Officer Lee Sook Yee says Kenanga isn't as bearish on Malaysia this year. She believes after two years of seeing funds flow out of the country, Malaysian equities have the potential to surprise on the upside. 
Kenanga Investors listed today, the KLCI 2xL and KLCI 1xI, the country's first leveraged and inverse exchange traded funds or ETFs, to be benchmarked against the FBM KLCI. According to Bursa Malaysia CEO Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift, the introduction of such ETFs will further invigorate the local bourse. This is because they offer investors a wider range of products catering to varying degrees of risk appetites.